Imagine a world where more women had the time to fully explore their genius. Welcome to She Rebel Radio, a community-driven podcast dedicated to supporting women to unlearn conventional rules and create businesses of significance. My name is Lulu Mins. I host retreats and create spaces for entrepreneurial women to explore their genius. And today I'm going to create that same space for you right here on this podcast episode. What does it look like for you to have your cake and eat it? What do you want more of? And what are you sacrificing to get it? Welcome to episode 101 of She Rebel Radio, being the woman with the most cake. Ladies, it is our birthday episode as we enter into September. It's our third birthday at the end of this month. We are wrapping up the summer series and it's also my personal birthday, which I coincided with the launch of She Rebel Radio three years ago. It's an honour to have you with us for this birthday episode. So grab a piece of cake if you have some, a cup of tea, a glass of Prosecco and celebrate this episode with us by being the woman with the most cake and I've got a super exciting announcement to make at the end of this episode about a one day retreat that you can celebrate our birthday with us coming up really soon. So how is it that we as women can have our cake and eat it? You know, I've been dying to jump on to the conversation about Sana Marin, the Finnish Prime Minister, a woman in power I think when she was um, put into that position of power, she was only 36 years old. That's amazing. She's younger than I am. And she got massively criticised a few weeks ago for daring to go out and dance and party and enjoy herself and actually be good at dancing and to wear a vest and look like a normal, attractive, sensual woman, which we all are, ladies, How can she possibly do that and be in a position of power, be a sensible woman who makes decisions, who succeeds in that masculine-based world? And what a fire fly did we see of conversations going on and the incredible support of other women doing, I think TikTok, I'm not on TikTok, but Instagram, all of that stuff, doing videos of themselves dancing saying you know what we can be powerful and we can dance and be feminine and sensual too we can be the women to have the most cake to have that cake and to eat it but society the bigger structures that exist is not quite ready but we are more ready than we have been. They were not quite ready. So what did they do? Drug tested her. How dare she be able to dance, be good at dancing, to enjoy herself with her friends whilst having a night off without being totally inebriated with drugs. That would be a good way to get her out of power, right? It's a kind of modern day witch troll, but what I love to see was the real support that came especially from women supporting other women because we are our biggest advocates and empowerers of supporting each other to be the woman who has it all, to be that woman with the most cake, to no longer tolerate that we can't be a contradiction as women, as those two polar opposites that perfectly complement each other. And those of you that know me, have worked with me, have done any of my self-study courses, attended a retreat, or just listened to She Rebel Radio, you know that I talk about masculine and feminine energy all the time. And that is where a lot of the confusion has come in, because she's not in her masculine power-based, structured government position. She's more in her feminine, in her flow at this point that she's been heavily criticised because society is intimidated by women who are powerful and can be in our feminine as well. But you know what? We're coming for you. We are ready and the world is ready too. And there are many male allies who are supporting us in doing this as well. And that feminine energy needs to be embraced across the board. Who remembers Theresa May when she got, um, you know, vilified by the press for dancing? And that was because she couldn't dance. Everyone laughed at her and she was very rigid and structured and not 
able to find her fun find her flow we've all been there ladies Um, sometimes when you're just not feeling it and other times when you're really in the zone in the mood and I went dancing out dancing last weekend it was super fun after you know some stuff going on that week it's a real way to let go to embody and it's it can be a real healing way for us as women to shake off stress and guys as well you know and we are allowed to do it and be in positions of power but look at that criticism when Theresa May couldn't dance, when she was more in her masculine, you know, structured body. We are damned if we do and doomed if we don't as women. This constant contradiction of how can we be, without being criticised, fun and serious, to be in flow and strategic, because it's really when we embrace all of these things that we find our balance, our harmony and our ease. And we live in a world that really values that masculine energy and is more critical and wary of that feminine based energy, which was so interesting to watch that unfold in the eyes of the media, but see how social media has its good and its bad, but how in this sense, you know, we were able to contribute to the narrative of supporting a woman in power by having fun being in her feminine, being in her flow and shaking off, quite frankly, the really stressful week that I have no doubt that she had. So pledging my support for Santa Marin here and I know many of you on She Rebel Radio will be doing the same. But how, what is the relevance to you? I hear you cry. And that is, you know, how do we as women have our cake and eat it? That saying means that we can't have two things that are in contradiction to each other at the same time, i.e. you can't physically have the cake if you've eaten it. You've either eaten the cake or you've got the cake. And I titled this episode Being the Woman with the Most Cake because that is having both. And I got that line from a lyric from Hole, the band Hole, with the lead singer Courtney Love, who has had her fair share of demonisation by the press, with um, the suicide of Kurt Cobain, who remembers that in my teenage years, and she was even blamed for that. It was her fault. She must have been such an awful woman that he couldn't be here in the world anymore. And I was a massive fan of Nirvana and Hole, but I really saw that, even age 12, 13, however old I was, that I didn't understand why this woman was being vilified. And listening back to a lot of those old tracks of Hole that I used to listen to, there's so much in it um, of the crap that we get as women of these contradictions that we get as women but in one of her songs um I think it's Violet I can't remember it's on the best album anyway and um she talks about being the girl with the most cake I want to be the girl with the most cake and she's singing about love in that song and her desperately wanting to be with the guy that's with all the other women She desperately wants him because everyone else has him. But then if she has him to herself, then that's the contradiction. The other women haven't got him. So how does she how does she do that? And she recognises the contradiction. There's so many, much genius in the lyrics by Courtney Love. And she is a she rebel through and through and has really held her own over the years. So big up respect for Courtney Love. Always one of my faves growing up. So this contradiction, we can't have our cake and eat it. God, as women, we know it so well. Yet within that, we live in a world of polarities. The universe is made up of polar opposites, two opposite forces that pull in totally opposite directions that are so complementary to each other because they're the polar opposite that they actually cancel each other out and create balance harmony and ease if we have them in equal measures now we live in a world that values the masculine over the feminine certainly from a power perspective so it becomes very confusing when women embody both of these things and in my opinion we embody both of these things much better which is why we're so damn confusing 
although men have masculine and feminine energy and you know self-identifying women self-identifying men whatever you identify as I consider myself very much as a woman 70% in her feminine and 30% in her masculine and when my personal because we all have our own personal balance and that is one way you can embrace your own contradiction and I'm going to share with you a little bit more at the end as I said about the retreat but also my feminine success toolkit which really embraces these contradictions and is something that I've taught and worked with women for five or six years now but considering those duality you know those polarity things for you and us as women things like be strong don't be too strong lose weight don't be too skinny you can be successful you can be liked be flirty not slutty speak up but tone it down you can make your own money but don't make too much money you can have the career or the children really leads us to lots of confusion and us making sacrifices for the things that we want because we're told that we can't be the woman with the most cake so this episode today is all about you becoming that woman with the most cake And talking about feminine principles here, this is the being the woman with the most cake. There's nothing you need to do. It's about the being. They're two polar opposites. The being is the feminine. The doing is the masculine. When I've talked about this previously, contraction is the key to expansion. They are two polar opposites, but they perfectly complement each other. Contraction is a feminine principle. Expansion is a masculine principle. I don't need to even highlight here probably that we live in a world that values the expansion over the contraction. But how do we embody all of these things and find that balance, harmony and ease? Because we can be both. We can have both and we can embrace both. So I want to ask you today is what would embracing more of those contradictions or those polarities look like for you? What is it that you really want more of? And where are you sacrificing to have more of what you want? An example here might be, I want more money, but I'll have less time. And I call these either or stories. I can have this or this. I want more time, so I must have less money. What if you flip that? I want more time and more money. I want more success and to be more liked because that is a classic, you know, the more successful women are, the less liked we are by men and women. That's an old sociological study, however, and I do think that's massively changing with that support that we as women are giving one another. We are fed up of being told that we can be one thing or another, whereas really we can embrace all of that. And how powerful is it for men to do those things as well, to embrace their emotions, their vulnerability, and be masculine as well. Being their divine masculine, us being in our divine feminine, is us really finding that balance, harmony and ease with these things. So grab a pen and paper if you haven't done so already. Write down what would embracing more contradiction look like for you? What do you want more of? And what are you sacrificing to have that? And then underneath that, I want you to write, I can have this and this. Or even take it a step further and say, I am this and this. I am my source of abundance and time. Really change it that that source comes from you. As women, we have a very complex duality as well, this inner and outer world. And, you know, when we embrace both of those things and recognise that we are actually, you know, abundance or we are the source of time, and I might do some separate episodes on this because, you know, even Einstein talks about this, then we recognise all of this stuff comes from us. We are not separate from it. And again, oneness is really a feminine principle as well. Separation is a masculine one, but it has its place. We have to, but if we ask the question from a space of oneness, of recognising we're all the same, if we then separate things out in order to study and focus on them one thing at a time, that's when we can understand how something functions as a thing on its own, but then we have to put it back into the oneness of, of how it functions as the whole, 
a more holistic approach, which again, us as women, we understand that because we find it really difficult to disconnect and separate at times to our own detriment. So there we see the power in a masculine principle there of that separation, because if we're connected to all things all the time, super exhausting. I'm sure you recognize that. How do I disconnect um, and separate myself out? But you can do that from your feminine foundation, which is oneness and that connection point. So I'm sharing with you here, running through some of the feminine principles as I share, you know, frequently on She Rebel Radio and with clients and as I've worked with clients over the years. But how would you like access in this supporting you being the woman with the most cake? And I love some of my clients over the years have you know, reported back, you know, Lulu's really helped me be the woman have it, who has it all, you know, whether that's really embracing more of their family life and career, more business approach that they really want to take or whether that's really reclaiming more time and money, etc. is the feminine principles have really supported them to do that. And I am going to give eight ladies only free access to my feminine success toolkit where you get all 24 of the feminine and masculine principles into your inbox with a way that you can use them in your everyday and these are a practice they're not it's not about being perfect we're ditching all of that it's about practicing these principles and um, embodying them and seeing how this dance of the masculine feminine can really support you being the woman who has the most cake and seeing what else comes up for you today as well because that's a very individual journey but I am going to give eight women the feminine success toolkit as an invitation to our feminine power retreat day which is going to take place in October the 13th to celebrate our third birthday there are just eight spaces for a one day retreat where we're going to be diving into feminine power we're going to be have a beautiful opening ceremony you're going to leave with your power up plan for the rest of the year the last few months the winter months and we're going to have beautiful yoga and sound bath session with josephine from echo yoga who is incredible so i'm super excited for this day they are limited spaces you can check it out at lulumins.com forward slash feminine power and if you're listening to this after the date etc see what's on there there might be another one or you might have missed it but get in touch with me for what else is coming up and if you can't make an in-person event with me because that event's going to be in Sussex by the way then you are invited to our healing and empowerment circle which is online with Gem from Gem Yoga on the 17th of September which is the autumn equinox and we are going to gather online for a healing and empowerment circle and that will also support you to work through any blocks to heal from you know, past things that are preventing you from being the woman with the most cake. Those sacrifices maybe that you can't give up, that you are needing to give more and more up of. And it's a journey, right? There is no empty destination here. There's always another layer to go and to empower yourself for the season ahead. And you can grab your ticket to that online event on the 17th of September in the show notes below and I would love to see you either in person in October or online in September to celebrate with me you being the woman with the most cake remembering that when we empower each other as women to have it all to be it all to embody and embrace all of our contradictions then we empower another woman to do the same we all have our collective responsibility as women here having a feminine experience if that resonates with you as I said that balance point is different for all of us and then we all have our individual experience of that as well where we have an individual responsibility and a collective responsibility to heal and empower one another in being the woman with the most cake and you know really embodying this feminine power it is coming it is moving through and if you listen to she rebel radio whether this is your first episode today or whether you've been listening over the past three years you know you are on that on that road i'm telling you now um you're feeling that call to lead with feminine power feminine energy and knowing that you can't ditch the masculine energy completely because we need both okay so how do we do that we become the woman with the most cake get access to the feminine success toolkit 
like it's a real download for me when I first created that a number of years ago I was like god where's this coming from and you know it really does inform everything that I do and run through and you know including with one-to-one coaching with clients so super super powerful toolkit for you if you want to come to the feminine power retreat day thank you for celebrating with me thank you for supporting she rebel radio it's been amazing to be with you that is a wrap for our summer series and i'm really looking forward to coming back in the autumn with more amazing content and we will have some guests for you as well you've been listening to she rebel radio it's been an honor to support you taking the time to discover more of your genius If you'd like to attend a retreat or work with me, please do visit lulumins.com and feel free to further the conversation with me and other incredible women on the usual social media platforms.